was a small boy, I was actually afraid of flying, believe it or not. And one day when I was 15 years old, out driving around, I came across to St. George Airport in South Carolina. Ran into a gentleman by the name of David Hansen. And David took me under his wing and he said, hey, son, if you want to go fly, let's go fly. Get permission from your family and let's come back out here tomorrow and do it. So I was eager to take a chance. I'd been scared my entire life and I said, you know what? What am I afraid of? So I went home, told my family. My family was like, what do you want to do for real? And uh, I said, I want to go fly. They said, okay. That's not what we've heard all your life. So I went down to the airport the next day. It was Sunday, January 8th, 1995. I'll never forget it. Went down the runway in the Cardinal, took off on runway five, got airborne, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And then we broke the horizon, and I looked, and I will never in my life forget that feeling that I had the moment I saw the horizon for the very first time. It was absolute, 100% true, unconditional love at first flight. I get chills. I get worked up thinking about how exciting that was. And then the journey thereafter to get involved in aviation wasn't an easy one. I didn't come from a very wealthy family. My mom and dad made do. Nobody was in aviation in my family, but I was stricken with that absolute total love on that day. I knew at some point I was going to have to figure out a way to, to make aviation part of my life. I worked my butt off. I gave it my all. And some of the mentors that I had in my life helped pull me in and guide me in the right direction so that I could have an opportunity to be successful in aviation. The last 25 years has been amazing. It really has. I've met some really incredible people. I've got some incredible friends. I've had some great times. I've had some rough times. But this journey has come and everything that has come along the way, every lesson that I've learned, every person that I've dealt with in aviation, good, or not so good, has taught me a little bit about making myself better. And that's what it's all about to me. Many, many people invested their time, their effort, their energy in me. Nobody gave me a thing along the way, but man, some people told me some things that I needed to learn. And I'll tell you, I'll be quite honest with you. The people that I appreciate just about as much as anybody were the ones who told me what I needed to know as opposed to what I wanted to know. This whole road has been an incredible journey. If you would have told me 25 years ago I'd be doing what I'm doing today, I'd tell you you were nuts. I'd say there's no way. In, at the beginning of the century, we were in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. And two brothers were working furiously to achieve the unthinkable. Powered, controlled man flight. Oral and Wilbur Wright we're working, trying to develop that beautiful thing we call an airplane. Believe it or not, in 1901, frustrated, tired, believing that all of his efforts were failing, Wilbur Wright says in bitter frustration, man will not fly for over a thousand years. Well, he was off by 998 years. On December 17, 1903, the flyer took flight. Don't let anybody ever doubt you. Don't ever doubt yourself. Stand confident. Stand firm. Believe in yourself. Let the talent within yourself shine. Because one of my old mentors once told me that life is like an hourglass. And we only have so much sand in that hourglass, and we don't always know how much sand we have in that hourglass. You have to decide if you're going to give any sand to someone or something to make it worthwhile. Because at the end of the day, 
When you look left and right, ahead of you and behind you, there's only one race. The only thing that I'm competing against is time and trying to do the best I have with the sand that I have left in my hourglass. And it took me a long time to arrive to that point in my life. But man, once I arrived to that point, some really awesome things started happening. And I'm, I'm really excited. So I don't know what the next 25 years is gonna be like, all I know is I'm going to give it my all. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. You know, I really love music. Music is nothing but poetry in the form of lyrics with instruments uh, to complement the music. And in my family and my friends like to tease me because a lot of times I'll hum if I don't know the lyrics. And I will make up my own lyrics sometimes just to be funny. But there's one piece of poetry I'll never screw up. And it is the most sacred words that have ever been uttered in aviation. Oh, I've slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Somewhere I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through the footless halls of air. Up, up, the long, delirious, burning blue. I've topped the wing-swept heights with easy grace. Where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with lifting mine I tried, the high, untrespassed sanctity of space put out my hand and touched the face of God.